Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Today we are breaking down one of the best archer builds in Dragon's Dogma 2, which includes the best weapons, gear, augments, and skills to use. The archer vocation has the ability to consistently deal high damage while also being able to target weak points with ease. Out of all the vocations in Dragon's Dogma 2, I personally think the archer is the most beginner friendly. Being a range focused class, you're more than likely to keep your distance from foes, which means you won't be taking much damage at all as long as you play smart. This playstyle opens many opportunities for high damage attacks since you have plenty of time to set up and unleash your most powerful abilities. With its emphasis on ranged attacks, the Archer excels at dealing substantial damage from a distance while also maintaining increased mobility compared to heavier vocations. The Archer's arsenal also includes crowd control abilities, allowing you to hinder or stun enemies from afar. You have two basic attacks, a loose shot which targets enemies automatically but deals less damage, and a steady shot which enables a manual form of aiming that deals heavier damage but requires more precision. Thanks to Steady Shot, you can directly focus enemy weak points, which is a huge advantage the Archer has compared to some of the other vocations. Archers function best when they're removed from the action, and this is because they lack defensive abilities. On the bright side, being out of action makes finding and targeting enemies a lot easier. With this vocation, you will excel in ranged combat and be able to deliver both concentrated and AoE damage from a distance. This guide is designed to help you create the best possible archer in Dragon's Dogma 2 and provides a blueprint to make your archer increasingly more powerful over time. For character appearance, your best bet is to go with a short and lightweight character. Now even though you sacrifice defense and weight capacity, you gain extra speed and stamina recovery with a smaller build. Now, if you usually play with a heavier and taller character, you'll immediately notice how much faster the stamina recovery speed is after you make your character smaller while also maintaining a lighter equipment load. An archer will benefit greatly from a smaller build because mobility plays a huge role in your playstyle and determines how quickly you can traverse the map. Now, I'm not trying to steer you away from making a tall and heavy archer by any means, but I at least wanted to explain why I feel the smaller build makes the most sense for the vocation's playstyle. The archer's basic skills can be very deadly, especially if you use Steady Shot. You can fire arrows from the hip, and the game will actually auto-target enemies near you, which is surprisingly consistent. Although, Steady Shot is how you achieve the most damage possible with all of your skills. Like I mentioned earlier, Steady Shot unlocks a manual targeting system which makes targeting enemy weak points a lot easier. This is very useful during boss fights. You can do direct damage to a dragon's heart, or even shoot at the wings of a flying griffin to knock it down from the skies. It's your most powerful stance, and if you maintain enough distance and keep your awareness levels high, you'll never take damage and you will feel very powerful. Now believe it or not, the front kick is actually very useful, especially when you use it in midair, launch yourself off of an enemy, and attack them at the same time. Easily one of the most satisfying things you can do when you're playing as an archer. You can even steady shot your most basic attack, and even click the right stick to initiate a puncture dart, which draws the bowstring to its absolute limit before firing. Makes aiming more difficult, but will allow you to pierce targets with a greater impact and just do more damage overall. Now let's talk about the best weapon skills for the archer, starting with Manifold Shot. Now believe it or not, you can use this starting skill throughout the entirety of your playthrough. It deals concentrated damage to enemy weak points, and can be very strong with the right bow and upgrades. Dwarven upgrades, for example, provide a much higher boost to your knockdown power when upgrading. Knockdown power also determines how quickly you can knock down larger enemies and put them into a vulnerable state. For my second skill, I'm using Tempest Shot, which is an incredible skill for quick damage and constant pressure. If you use this skill with Steady Shot, it will do even more damage, and always remember that Steady Shot increases the damage of all of your skills. Now, another skill that could also fit this slot would be Erupting Shot, which fires an explosive arrow at enemies, which can be shot at again to cause an explosion and deal massive AoE damage. Erupting Shot is actually one of the strongest archer skills, but its major flaw is the fact that you can only use limited explosive arrows, and it fully depends on how many you manage to find, purchase, or craft. 
Because of this limitation, I prefer using Tempest Shot for more consistency. If you have enough arrows though, definitely give it a shot, you will not regret it. For the next skill, I'm using Spiral Arrow, which is an advanced form of Whirling Arrow that deals more strikes and way more damage. Easily one of your most powerful skills in your arsenal. This skill works the best when you target enemy weak points and consistently stack additional spiral arrows, which can be very useful when combined with other skills. It's good for pressure on enemies and in most cases will also make them flinch if you target them in the right area. This will leave them vulnerable for a short amount of time, opening more DPS opportunities for your other skills. The last skill I'm using on this build is Deathly Arrow an advanced form of dire arrow that inflicts greater harm and has the ability to pin smaller targets to walls. This skill works really well in conjunction with Spiral Arrow and Tempest Shot to help you deal some heavy concentrated damage. This skill setup provides more of a DPS role for your archer overall. With access to more consistent talents which don't require any specific arrow to activate, you'll find yourself able to maintain control of the fight and focus primarily on positioning and marksmanship. Skills like Eruption Shot, Tarring Shot, and Blighting Shot can be extremely useful and can easily turn the tides of any engagement quickly. If you don't mind using limited items, your best skill setup would be Erupting Shot for high fire damage and AoE, Tempest Shot for quick and sustained DPS, Spiral Arrow for damage over time, and Deathly Arrow for a high damage strike that is useful in every situation. For Augments, I'm using Endurance, which increases your maximum stamina, Athleticism, which reduces stamina consumption when dashing, Lethality, which increases damage dealt when striking a target's vitals, Avidity, which enables you to climb up cliffs and scale foes and other surfaces more quickly, Gratification, which restores your health for every enemy you kill, and Subtlety, probably one of the best Augments for the Archer because it decreases the likelihood of being targeted by foes. Very useful when you're repositioning, waiting for your stamina to recover, and when you're targeting weak points. Veracity from the Mystic Archer vocation would also be a great addition to add later on. This augment lets you recover a small bit of stamina per kill, which would work great when paired with the Gratification augment. You could also use Dominance from the Warrior vocation to further increase your knockdown power against larger enemies for example. And I would also recommend Exaltation from the Mage vocation, which increases your overall stamina recovery speed. The best early game bow is the Veteran's Arc, which can be purchased from the weapons vendor in the Checkpoint Rest Town. It's an amazing upgrade compared to your base bow, it offers high strength, and it's also affordable. The Veteran's Arc will carry you through most of your journey, but I would highly recommend purchasing the Predator Bow from the weapons vendor in Bak Patal during mid-game as soon as you can. The Predator is a great bow that can help you throughout the entire mid-game. It's fairly light, and it has decent stats to remain usable until you get the Hydra Husk Bow, which is the bow I am currently using on this build. This bow has the highest strength out of every bow in the game, but it's a bit heavier compared to other options. It's also only available for purchase during New Game Plus, so if you're still on your first playthrough, the Predator is probably your best option. For Endgame though, if you want a lighter bow that still offers exceptional strength, then I would go for the Dragon's Rancor, which can be purchased from the Dragonforged NPC at the Bay Wayside Shrine. It will cost you 110 Worms Life Crystals, and provides a lighter option compared to the Hydra Husk. Either way though, the Hydra Husk is easily the most powerful bow in the game. The overall design looks amazing, it deals very high damage, and offers exceptional knockdown power, especially if you focus on Dwarven upgrades. For my armor, I'm using the Galewind Helm, the Valkyrian Scale Cloth, Mercenary Greaves, and the Linen Cloak. This armor is available for purchase from various vendors during New Game Plus, but to be honest, Armor is purely cosmetic for the archer considering you'll be outside of the action most of the time and won't really have to worry about taking damage. Plenty of armor options available at all the vendors for each city during your first playthrough and honestly your best bet is to pick up some armor from the vendor in Bak Patal. For rings, I'm using the Ring of Vehemence, which increases the chances of staggering and knocking down your enemies with your attacks, and the Ring of Quickening for a quicker stamina recovery speed. You could also use the Ring of Regeneration, which lets you recover even more health in addition to the Gratification Augment, or even the Ring of Skullduggery, which increases damage dealt when attacking foes from behind. 
For Pawn Synergy, your best option is to add members to your party who specialize in close range attacks, so you have more time for range based attacks. My main pawn is a fighter, which is great to have on your team thanks to the survivability and raw power that the vocation provides. Fighters are great for pulling aggro and up close and personal damage. It's also a great idea to add a thief to your party. Thieves specialize in close quarters combat and are also very mobile allowing them to cling onto bosses easily, dash out of harm's way, steal items, and deal a lot of damage. For a fourth party member, it may be worth adding a mage. Mages specialize in support spells that can offer benefits for your archer, including increased stamina recovery speed, heals, and even damage buffs. Most importantly, mages can augment your weapons with different affinities, such as lightning, fire, or ice for example, which can be deadly against enemies who are vulnerable to a specific one. This concludes the ultimate archer guide for Dragon's Dogma 2. Hopefully after watching this video you'll have a solid understanding of how to build your archer and the playstyle it requires. Thanks again for clicking on this video and sticking around until the end. If you want to see more Dragon's Dogma 2 build guides, I already uploaded a Thief, Mystic Spearhand, and Fighter guide on my channel. I highly recommend checking those out if you're interested in more. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. The channel has been growing very quickly, and I seriously can't thank you guys enough. Don't forget to subscribe for more.